Hello beautiful people, my name is Kaylin. Today I want to do a Sketchbox. So for Christmas this year, I got a one year subscription from Sketchbox and I'm really excited about it just because every month that means that I get new supplies. So this is the basic version of this kit and it's from September, 2021. The reason that it's from September, 2021 is because I got extra ones that came in for the holidays. So I got a couple boxes for Christmas and then I'm going to be getting one a month from then on. Also an interesting note is that each sketch box comes with a featured artist and this month is by Britt Martin Illustration. Okay, so let's open it up and see what's inside. I think I'm gonna set this to the side right now just so I don't know exactly what I have. And then I will look at that once I have everything out laid out and I've made my guesses on what everything is. It also came with this little postcard. Okay, look at that. There are so many details in that. It is art by Rodora Jacob. If I butchered that, <laughs> my apologies. Her pieces are available on her website. She also is available for commissions. So that is her information, that is her website, and that is her Instagram if you are very interested in the art featured in this image right here. It also came with a sketchbook and it looks like it is a hot pressed watercolor paper on a four by nine pad. So obviously, I'm not sure how I can really show you this, but the quality, it's very thick. And so that way colors aren't gonna go through. I've also noticed a lot of watercolor papers have texture, but this is very smooth. So I'm excited to see what materials I have to go with that. Let's dive in and finally take out the materials. I feel like that's the main thing I should be going for here. It comes with a, a Sketchbox signature brush. It looks like it's gonna be like a fluffy brush. Yeah, it's a very, very soft bristled brush, but when put together, it's quite dense, actually. And honestly, I think that'll be really nice for blending. If I need to use water, I'm not sure. I'm gonna need to look at the description, obviously. And then I also got an ink pen. So it's brown and it is a, I don't know if that's called a chisel nib. I think so. I'm excited to swatch that. And then next to the side, I have a brush marker that's water-based ink. So I will be using water. I knew it. I was okay. Yep, it's gonna blend. It's gonna look cool. I wonder if the nib's gonna be stiff or if it's gonna be like quite flexible. Obviously, once I swatch it, that would be a good time to find out. It also came with this brush pen. It says it's made in Germany. Like it's some kind of tan color or gold color. It came with these three that are the same brand. So they're aqua pens. Ooh, and it has a fine nib and a brush nib on each side. I like the colors that it came with too. It came with like a lavender, lilac-y color, a yellow, and a quite hot pink. I mean, not like the hottest pink ever, but it is, I would say, a nice tone of pink. I'm gonna be so, oh, okay, I'm so excited. And I have one last thing that I need to open. Okay, it's a brush pen and it's a bit thinner than the other one in kind of like a foresty green color. I'll have to see what the actual tone is called. And that's everything. So now I'm going to go back to my initial sheet that tells me what everything is. Other than my basic interpretation, I'll see the actual defined features of each product. So these are Marabou Graphic Aqua Pens and it came in the color Rose Pink, Raspberry, or maybe that's flipped. I don't know, it does not say on the marker itself. <laughs> Either way, we have these two gorgeous colors and tangerine. It also came with a Artline Supreme Brush Marker in the color dark red. This water soluble marker is great for filling in that color and creating a transparent wash of color. Oh, and then I didn't read the description of the one on the top, but these also say they are dual tipped markers that are water soluble. I love watercolor and I don't often work with watercolor pens too often. I have tried them before, but nothing like these ones. This is a fine liner brush that creates strong lines and texture with watercolor pigment. Oh, so this is watercolor pigment. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. 
I didn't realize that all of these would be like water soluble. And next I have this Edding 1340 brush pen in a tan tone. And I think this is gonna be more of a line work thing that can go either beneath or above. We'll have to see. And then it also came with a King Art ink line pen. This three millimeter brown chisel tipped fine liner is great for thick brown lines and can be used for initial sketches on or on top of the watercolor pigment. Oh, so this one, it says that it could be used initially or it can be used on top of. So that gives me the impression that it really won't smudge if the watercolor pigment on top is rubbed against it, but potentially that could be false. And then it also came with a Sketchbox Signature Mop Brush. And it is a 3-8 fluffy brush, which is great for creating soft swaths of color and can hold a lot of pigment, which makes sense. There is a lot of thin bristles here so it's thick but like the bristles are all individually very soft and they also give the retail price of all the individual items so that's pretty cool all right now i need to swatch these so i can figure out what i want to do i think once i see the colors maybe i'll get some inspiration but if not i might have to like look up some references to see what i can find but yeah let's get started i think i want to try swatching them on here and on here just because the texture of the paper is going to be different this only came with eight sheets i think this is where i want to do my final composition is on the paper that they sent me just because i think it'd be fun i've never worked in anything this long i think before like the length is usually a bit shorter for me so i think that might be fun to try and fill up a four by nine space either way we have to swatch so I'm gonna start with my aqua pen. And I can try blending this with the fluffy brush. By adding water, I really wanna see how transparent I can make this color. Also, there is a little bit of pigmentation that's stuck, but I think that's more of a user error because I had to run and go get water because I forgot before I put it down on the paper. And if you can see, it does stay put there, but I think if you had blended it right after you put it down, that it would be a more seamless transition. Yeah, see, this is why I need to use their paper because it's starting to congeal the paper that I am initially swatching on. Now let's try it on here. You see how that absorbs that so much better than this that is like congealing up and pieces of the paper start to flake off. Yeah, so that's why there are differences in paper, people. The weight, the press, the texture of the paper all play a factor when it comes to and it can get very transparent as we can see i don't even know if on camera it can see those over here but there is a very light wash of yellow oh and i also need to swatch the fine nib of this brush as well and then obviously my assumption is that that is also water soluble yeah, so if you needed to just blend a tone around that line work, or honestly, you can blend it out the same as the brush nib, so that's really fun. Oh, wow, yeah. So that color match is honestly very accurate. Same with this one, honestly. The color match is very spot on, which is quite impressive because a lot of brush markers do not. People do swatches because markers don't normally completely match, but these honestly match really well. Also, I'd like to acknowledge, this is literally the cap to a perfume bottle that I ran and put some water in because I forgot that I needed some yeah <laughs> like i seriously went and just took the cap off my perfume bottle because i didn't want to go upstairs and grab a cup that is the level of lazy that i am you know i just embrace it at this point i don't know it works i mean you get innovative when you're lazy let me tell you that when I'm doing this part, look at how seamlessly this transition moves. The bristles on the brush are so soft that it is honestly not leaving any streaks in the pigment. It is just blending it out so smoothly and so perfectly. I am obsessed. Because honestly, these layer really well. Uh, you see that pigment there, it's still wet and I can put some pigment like that on top of it. And if I need to blend it, I still can. Just grab a tiny bit of water and swoop. And now we're going to swatch the fine brush nib. 
And last one is this one. The initial color, honestly, is quite similar almost to the blended out version of the dark tone. So that is useful to know because instead of having to create such a light wash, I could just use this one. Honestly, I was expecting this to be a little bit more purple. So the color accuracy is quite accurate on these ones, but this one is kind of confusing me. I thought that it would be a little bit more of a purplier tone. I'm noticing too that the brush nibs are actually quite stiff. So if you are looking to create like your lines, I think that there are some flexible brush markers that really honestly bug me just because when you swipe, it creates like a little swoosh rather than like a straight line like I am intending sometimes. And you know, there are dual factors to each, but I really like that these are a bit more stiff so that I am able to create that chiseled line if I am wanting to. And I honestly think that now that it's drying, it is turning a little bit more purpley toned, but I still see a lot of those pink tones in there. That could potentially be that this brush picked up the pigment from the pink, and then when I was blending it, it kind of made this a bit more pink. But I don't believe so. This is the red toned one. Dip it in some water. And blend. Ooh! Oh my god. That is gorgeous. Let's see how this one layers. Honestly, very similar. The brush nib is also a bit stiffer so that you are able to create more of a chiseled line and blend it out from there. Gorgeous. Okay. And I still need to swatch the fine liner of this one because I forgot. It looks like it's very similar to the color. So yeah, I don't think that the pinky tone that was coming from this is from the brush blending it out. Just because if you look at that, that initial color really does not look the same. So I'm glad that I swatched it just so I know. But I think that these honestly will blend together better. We have a tone, so we will see when it is in that more pinkish version. Now it is on to our fine liner. One that blends out. Okay. Ooh, okay, so it's, yeah, it's that burnt orangey. That's gonna layer really nice on top of that. Okay, let's see if this one, yeah, I believe that this one is also water soluble. Yeah. Ooh! I love swatching. I love seeing what the colors actually look like. Look at that. But yeah, that's like a nice tone underneath this one. This one is gonna go here. This one is getting a little more stuck than the others, but I do think it's meant to be a bit more of a line brush pen that is water soluble, but not intended to blend as much. Because you can see that that initial pigment that I first put down is kind of staying in its place rather than blending as some of these other ones did. Yeah, this is an ink pen. It is the chiseled nib brown tone. Oh, it's all just very slightly different tones of one another. It's honestly just another tone down away from this color. I think all of these colors are gonna blend together very, very nicely. This fine liner. Here I am testing water on top of them to see if they're going to stay in their place like liners or if they're meant to also be water soluble. Okay, yeah, no, these are intended to stay in their place. So this is going to be my line work. This is not going to blend with the other ones unless I use like a hatching style. That is very good to know because these can go down initially and then I can put these other tones on top of it and I don't have to worry about these smudging. I'm gonna go off camera and I'm going to come up with a couple ideas, sketch them down, and I will be back to test out the rest of these products all together. Alrighty, I am back and it, this is what I came up with. At the time that I'm filming this, it's like January 2nd and the new year just happened. So I was kind of inspired by that. That's why I started with this couple kissing on the new year. I thought it'd be fun to do like a transitional drawing since it is so long. I even have cats in the bottom making a heart out of their tails. And I don't know, I think it's really cute with all the confetti, but I'm gonna start with my line mark so that way I can build on top of it and hopefully kind of cover it up. But I wanna get rid of the pencil so that those aren't stuck down underneath the pigments. 
And here I am doing some line work. I think my favorite part is probably just those two little cats in the bottom left corner. I love their tails interlocking. I mean, who doesn't like a good cat? Literally, I'm allergic and I love cats. I will still pet your cat, but I will sneeze later. Um, and I'll have a stuffy nose and probably some puffy eyes, but I love cats. Okay, maybe not cats, I love kittens, you know? You need to take time to get to know a cat. And I think that's my biggest issue is that like I'm allergic to them. So like <laughs> the only time I'm ever around them is when I'm visiting someone. And of course they're not gonna like me. They don't know me. And now I'm going in with color, the scariest part for me probably, but I'm trying to make that upper lip just a little lighter than the one that I have beneath it. Also, I decided to take in a detail brush to blend out the skin tone. I will use the other one on the background because that creates the nice swaths of color, as I said before, but I wanted these to be quite detailed and they're so small that I needed that space. And I'm not loving how her face has a little bit of pink on it. It almost looks like smeared lipstick. And so I'm gonna try making some LED lights in the background using the red and I'm gonna blend it out with some water. I don't want it to blend too far so that it becomes muddy or covers up the other areas. So I'm gonna try to be really careful with it. I'm trying to create sort of like a party aesthetic, but only focused on these two people. Obviously the cats there kind of make it seem like it's a homey environment. So I'm imagining it's like a house party, you know. Um, for me this New Year's, I just went to my friend's apartment. We didn't have really any decorations or anything. We were just kind of hanging out. We were playing video games and board games and we were watching scary movies. I actually ended up completing a Lego bouquet set, which was just like these little flowers that I had to build. It was so meticulous and it really, it wasn't even one of the biggest complex ones. People that do Lego sets, talented because they take hours. Speaking of hours, I can't even tell you how many hours me and my friends played Jackbox games over this past weekend. If you don't know what Jackbox games are, it's just a video game where everyone can connect to their phone and there are questions like trivia questions, personality questions, things of that sort, and you answer from your phone and you know, it keeps track of points. It's quite funny, honestly, most of the time. And I am obsessed. We were playing for hours. They have like multiple different versions of this Jackbox game as well. So we were able to get a good variety of games in there throughout the weekend. I don't know, I just feel like there's so much yellow on the left side, so I added it on the confetti, and I'm also going to be going in and adding it into the hair again. I honestly can't really remember what I did for the base color of the brunette hair, but I'm just gonna go in with this tannish brown, and then I'm gonna go over it with my darker tones. I don't know if that's exactly what I did last time, but I'm gonna try to make it look mirrored as if they're the same people on each side. So hopefully I can make it look similar. Going back in with that dark green, I'm creating more shadows and I'm trying to kind of indent it at the hip to make it look like the fabric is bending. But honestly, I feel like this brush could be better utilized since the whole piece that I'm making is so pink, it just kind of contrasts that. But if I were to do this again, I feel like I would use this brush for like pine needles or grass or anything of that sort because I feel like it would create really good texture and it would be a better use of the product. You know, I really wanted to use just what was in the box, but I think I might cave and go in with my Micron pen just because I want it to look cleaner. This is looking kind of messy to me right now. And if I were to just have the black marker, I feel like it would look so much better. So I'm gonna cave, I'm gonna go in and use a product outside of this. And hopefully it doesn't ruin it. I will be back in just one second. Alrighty, beautiful people. So here is the completed drawing with line work added. I think it'd be fun to go in with a white gel pen, but I might just do that later. I think that overall though, looks really good. Um, this sheet ended up coming off of it at the last minute. Honestly, these pages have stuck together very durably. Like throughout the whole sketching process and everything, that page never came off. But after I was messing with it here a little bit, um, the page did come off. However, they still fit together really nice. I don't know, I think that's a fun illustration. I like the storytelling aspect of it. I like that it looks like transitional from the before New Year's, like New Year's Eve versus New Year's Day, once it actually turns New Year's. I think that was fun. It was a good first sketch box because I've never had a sketch box before and I got to play with it and I got to see some new art in there and I got to play with it. And now I have a new sketchbook, some new materials to work with, which is super fun. 
yeah, I can't really complain. Um, I can't imagine me not liking any of these boxes unless I'm unable to create like a piece that I'm content with. But for a first time trying out these materials, I think it looks really good. It was a fun try and a good mind break from everything that's going on in the world currently. So yeah, let me know what you think about it and I will see you in the next video when I'm playing with more art supplies. Bye everybody.